This video is sponsored by The Great Courses Plus. In my opinion, as landscape photographers, the two first things that a person should learn inside of Photoshop or the first reason to start using Photoshop is for one, the clone tool and cleaning up stuff. It just works so much better than anything you can do in Lightroom. And then focus stacking. So one of the common things that you hear people say is that I don't need to do much post-processing because I try to get it right in camera. When it comes to perfect sharpness from front to back, that's one of those things that you just can't get right in camera unless you're Ben Horn shooting large format film and you can tilt the bellows thing or maybe you shoot all of your landscape photography with a tilt shift prime. Those are like the only two use cases where you can get perfect sharpness from front to back right in camera. So let me show you how easy focus stacking can be because a lot of people make it way harder than it actually is. So the first thing that you have to do when focus stacking is you have to actually get the files. So what you have to do is in the field, shoot in manual exposure. That way all of your exposures are going to be exactly the same. And then you just simply focus on the point closest to the camera. And then a little bit further and then a little bit further. And I'm probably going to do that until I have six or seven images until you're finally focused on that background. The number of files required or the number of different focus stacked images you need to get sharp from front to back totally varies on how close the closest thing is to the camera. So assuming you're shooting with a wide angle lens, if you are at the minimum focus distance of your particular lens, like six to 10 inches, then you're probably going to need at least like five or six different images. But if the first thing is not for like three or four feet, you're only going to need like two or three images tops. The number of images required, it depends on how close you are to the closest thing. So in this particular image, I took this during the F4 road trip and it was one of those situations where I wanted everything to be sharp from front to back. I was there to photograph both the cactus as my foreground element and the Eastern Sierras in the background. So this particular shot is the last in my series of four images I took. I was focused on the background in this particular frame. My settings were ISO 100 F16 at 0.4 seconds. So even at F16, look at how out of focus my barrel cactus is. That's unacceptable. Like that's not good enough, especially when you can just do a quick little focus stack, throw it all together. So the way I shot these was in my first image, I was focused on the barrel cactus. Then in this next image, I was focused on the back of the barrel cactus. And this image, I was focused back here on this mid ground rock. And then in the last image, I was focused on the mountains in the background. So the way that we're going to throw these together is that I'm just going to quickly do a global edit to one of these raw files. I'm going to get my colors looking the way I want it. Maybe we'll do just a quick little graduated filter in our sky, recovering some highlights, maybe adding a little bit of contrast just to bring down that sky a wee bit. I'm going to mask out some of my sharpening. That way I'm only sharpening details, decrease the radius, increase the detail, remove chromatic aberrations, and maybe let's add a little bit of saturation. So now I feel like this is kind of a good starting place for this image. Now what we need to do is sync all of these same settings across the other files. So I'm just going to select the first file that I've already edited, hold down shift, click on the last file. So they're all selected. And then I'm going to hit sync, check all and synchronize. That way each one of these focus stack Im images get the exact same treatment. That way we're dealing with the exact same exposure and everything and it'll blend well. So now all we're going to do is right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. That's going to open all of these layers up one on top of the other inside the same file. And then we're going to focus stack them. Okay. So it's opened all of the layers up here inside of Photoshop over here in our layers tab, you can see them all open. And as I turn the eyeballs off and on, you can see that it appears that the focal length changes that's called focus breathing. So when you shift your plane of focus, uh, an extreme amount like we have here, you get a slight change in focal length. The first thing that we need to do is we need to compensate for that because nothing lines up right now. So what we need to do is select all of these by holding down shift, go up to edit, 
auto align layers. We'll just leave auto selected. So what that's going to do is it's going to take a look at each file and then align them. That way everything lines up. That way we can actually focus stack the image. So now it's aligned everything. And as I turn these eyeballs off and on, you can see that it has totally gotten rid of that focus breathing. Now at this stage, I like to make a copy of these layers. And the reason I want to do that is because sometimes Photoshop screws up the blending and it makes it very difficult to, get, to easily go back because it does so many different steps. So if we make a copy of these, we're going to have a really easy way of going back and redoing it the manual way if Photoshop screws it up. So what I'm going to do is just drag these down into a folder. So it's put them all inside this group one. And now we're going to duplicate that folder. You can do that by going to control or command J. So now we have two copies of these four layers. One copy we're going to attempt to blend. The other copy is just our backup. So I'm going to go up to our top folder. I'm going to hold down shift and select all four layers, then go up to edit auto blend layers. It's going to know automatically that this is a stack of images. It's a focus stack rather than a panorama. And I always leave these two check boxes selected. It's just a way of helping Photoshop kind of fill in the gaps or any weird spots in the image. And then I'm going to hit OK. So now it's going to go through and it's going to look at those images and it's only going to take the sharpest parts from each one of those images and then blend them all together using layer mask. So now if we look at our layers here, you can see exactly what it's done. It's used layer mask to blend all of the different images together. If we zoom in now, we should have perfect sharpness up here in our barrel cactus, as well as perfect sharpness back here in our mountains. This is one of those things that once you do it at once, you have it, you know how to do it. And it's also one of those things that there's no reason not to do because it drastically improves the image quality of your images. So why would you not do it? It's not that hard. It's totally worth doing. Also, I should state that a static scene like this is an ideal time to do it because nothing's moving. Even if the wind was blowing, the only thing that could potentially move is your camera. But more than likely, if you're using a decent tripod, everything's going to stay static. There's no reason to not have this perfectly sharp from front to back. There's a big difference between acceptably sharp, which is what hyperfocal distance focusing does for you, or perfectly sharp, where you have everything 100% tack sharp from front to back. If you plan on printing your images, you best be focus stacking. So I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this before, but in a previous life, I was a golf course greenskeeper. And the thing about being a golf course greenskeeper is that you have nothing but time to consume audio content. So for me, that meant a lot of podcasts. It also meant a lot of audiobooks, And it also meant today's sponsor, which is The Great Courses Plus. So I've been a fan of The Great Courses for a very long time. I'm a huge history nerd. I don't know if you guys know that about me, but I'm a, I love learning about history. And back in the day, I used to listen to lectures about, you know, the fall of Rome and the emperors of Rome and the pharaohs of Egypt and comparative religion. I listened to a whole bunch of different courses from the great courses. But if you don't know what it is, it's, it's this huge database of really incredible lectures from really prestigious, well-known university professors. So let's say that you're into astrophysics. You could listen to lectures from Neil deGrasse Tyson teaching you astrophysics. Maybe you're interested in cooking. They have really incredible partners such as the Smithsonian, National Geographic. They have multiple National Geographic photographers on there. It's just a great resource for learning new stuff from really prestigious people. So if you're interested in such things, you can go to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash Nick Page, and that gets you a free trial. So you can go, you can check it out, see all the different courses that they have available to you. I know that I'm excited to start diving back in, especially for like my upcoming road trips and stuff. So hopefully you guys will check it out. I want to thank The Great Courses Plus for sponsoring today's video. All right, guys, hopefully this has helped. Focus stacking is actually incredibly easy once you do it once or twice, and it dramatically improves the image quality of your images. It's the kind of thing that you really, really notice if you're going to print. So thank you guys so much. We'll see you in the next video. Take it easy, everybody. Whoa.